Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno as we experience a little Irish charm here down at the BFI as we attend the UK premiere of Jimmy's Hall. I believe in my neighbour, my fellow man, meeting up and struggling to understand their lives as best we can. The hall is a safe space where we can think, talk, learn, listen, laugh and dance. <laughs> it brings out the best of us. So come along and see what we're doing with your own eyes. Don't be frightened. Now, the, the, the story feels very much about a sense of community spirit. Is that important yes. for you to capture? Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, it's about a, a guy in a, a community that established a dance hall outside the control of the church. And uh, the church opposed it because, because they wanted to control everything. They wanted to control education, the dance, and how you have fun and control your thoughts um, and the, the struggle for a free space is still very important I mean we're a very manipulated society it's a lot more sophisticated than the old Catholic Church from before the war but nevertheless the, 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 the space for a dissident voice is very hard to find um, and of course in some parts of the world impossible as as young women are in fear of their lives because they want an education well it was in search of an education that, or to prevent a kind of education that the church closed down Jimmy's Hall and the, the heart of it is about freedom of, um, of expression um, so for you as the director how important was it to give your actors freedom of expression well I mean obviously the the script is written by Paul Laverty but they, they you have to find actors who will inhabit that and absorb it and make it part of themselves so so that's um, I mean it, it's a it's a freedom but it's also um, um, a, you know a making a film which you have to um, you have to um, uh, direct really but but there should be a sense of liberation about the a sense of spontaneity at least in what they do or being in the moment yeah, yeah, absolutely. Being in the moment, yeah. And, and I believe you don't give the, your actors the complete script. So how does that technique, what's the beauty of using that technique for you? In, in what you um, well, we, we shoot in sequence. So you start at the beginning and you film, film it to the end. And um, they, in a way, they go through the story and, and learn it as they go. I mean, they know everything about the character and who they are, so there's no surprises in what they would do. Um, but with there's a surprise, you film the surprise, and there are one or two surprises in the film. Um, and um, so the, the, the thing is to make the moment true. And if you experience as the characters experience it, I mean, sometimes it helps, you know, sometimes it helps. There is something evil hatching in that hall. Broughton and his crew are atheists. So our community faces a choice. Christ or Jimmy Broughton's hall. How are you doing? Very well. Excited? Very much. Yeah, big time. So this is a, an unconventional biopic, really, isn't it? Yeah. Is it exciting for you as an actor? Oh, amazing, yeah. And I didn't have the, uh, the, the, the pressure that would probably ordinarily come with making a biopic in that you may be playing a well-known person and have to do an impersonation of some kind. Nobody knows this guy, so it was a, it was a carte blanche, really. And yet you're, you're, you're performing as a, as a man that isn't really well documented, but yeah. he's kind of a, he's a folk hero. So how did you then build up the character? Um, with a lot of uh, long, intense rehearsal periods involving a lot of dancing and farming and eating farmers' diets, stuff like that, and spending a lot of time in that part of the world trying to you know, embrace the, the accent and physicality of people from there. Um, yeah, it's a long, slow period of, of osmosis, I think. You just try and put yourself in these situations and hopefully things seep in, you know. And the interesting thing as well with Jimmy, when we see him in the beginning of the film, he's coming back from America um, and he's, he's got to be careful, hasn't he, with how he conducts himself for yeah. not getting into trouble and I just wondered how that then affects the motivation of your character. Yeah, that's good, good insight, yeah. You've watched this movie. Um, yeah, so he, he had been run out of town, he had made a few enemies in the town and had to, had to flee. Ten years later, there's a change in the political climate, a new party have come to power on the back of, you know, very liberal and, uh, and fair policies and promises. So Jimmy Grant returns into that environment, sees that what, the, what was promised is not being fulfilled, and it's a case of whether or not he's going to sit on the fence and just live a quiet life. And being the kind of politically active guy he is with a 
he was a very sensitive man and had a really deep sense of justice. He couldn't sit idly by and watch things unfold, and he had to he had to do something about it, you know. Um, big, and I, I don't know if it's in the Bible that they, they say all, all it takes for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing, you know, and you, and you can't keep a good man down. And, and it all centres about around this, this village hall, really, isn't it? Yeah, and, that's right. And uh, can you tell us a little bit more about why that is such a big part? Yeah, that, that was the uh, centre point, really. That was their base, and that was the centre point of all the anger, and everybody, they, they kind of uh, pissed off geared their hatred towards this hall because of what it represented, you know. And for Jimmy and the, and the people who, who actually built this place, again, for them, that was a representation of, uh, it's a physical manifestation of their shared ideas and their, their passions, you know, and all things, all the things that they want to express and feel. And um, so it's a real iconic, symbolic, symbolic thing, yeah. He called us Antichrist. The church is nervous. We have to keep pushing. Make no mistake, it's a disaster for the community. It will be a tragedy if we turn them into a martyr. Stand aside. Yeah, like twice any man goes through that gate gets a bullet in the head. You're playing a character, um, the film's about freedom of expression, and you're playing a character that's thwarting that, so what was yeah. that like? Well, I suppose the character that I play is, is, is what you would call the face of modern Ireland, um, uh, in the modern Irish uh, church. Um, uh, we didn't want the, the, the representation of, of, the, of the Irish Catholic Church to be too extreme. Um, so he was a guy who's really trying to, um, to understand what the youth were, were doing at that time and um, trying not to um, you know, quash them too much. Uh, uh, so, uh, so yeah, it was great. I, I'm, I, was, I, I always say that I, was, I, I would have been happy to do the catering on this film, uh, except that I can't cook. From one battle to the next, we feel so trapped. A story of a man who was exiled from his country yes, he was without, even, yes. Exactly, yes, without even a free with a trial. Yes, that I must am. be for you as a writer uh, intriguing for you. Yes, it, it was intriguing, and you know what was even more intriguing was all the in the National Archive Office in in, in, in in Dublin. I went to try and figure out who made the decision when, and all the papers are missing, and nobody can explain it. So when the rich and the powerful want to crush not only a man but all memory of him. That becomes much more interesting. So it gives me great pleasure. 80 years later, you know, we, you know, um, we're celebrating the life of Jimmy and his friends. So Jimmy gets the last laugh, really. You know, it takes me well sometimes, but you know, we've got to learn from the tortoise and those people who resist. You know, it reminds me of the the wonderful activists in Argentina who pursued the murderers for over 30 years to put them in prison. So I think there's lots of lessons to be learned from the tortoise and the Argentinians. Yes. And um, mm. there's such a, a wealth of history, politically, re religion. Yes, uh -huh. for, for you, you uh -huh. do you source at the, at the help of a, a local historian that can help you? Yes, of course. You, you use everything. You know, there are lots of newspaper reports. There are some good, um, some information about you know the public events. Um, there was also a wonderful historian, Donald O'Driscoll, University uh, 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 University in Cork, who helped a great deal, and um, and also the family. Stories passed down. That was very, very good. And they were a wonderful family and very hopeful. Um, but there are so the public events we know. But I mean, to, to have a, a really good story, you have to have the subtleties and the nuances and the hidden motivations. So some of it we've just had to imagine. You know, his intimate relationships and um, you know his relationship with his friends and the makeup of those friends. You know, so the fa some of the fabric has had to be imagined. And we're very clear about that, separating those two things. With regards to the, the, the hall, oh, the um, hall. it's a character in itself, the, isn't yeah, it? Exactly, the character was, it is a character in itself. This place they built with their own hands, their determination to keep this free space open. Because there was a place of great richness, they wanted to, you know, to, they wanted to think, debate, you know, there's boxing classes for the kids, there was art classes, but there was music and there was dance. And so it's very, very important, especially after these last elections, that this idea of a safe, free space where people can meet in safety. Now, I spoke to the journalists in Greece, you know, they know about a safe place. The one I talked about, the Golden Dawn, the right-wing fascists had knocked on their door. A, a, a journalist in Turkey, who had two people had been shot the day before. The, the journalist from Latin America. So this thing of a live, you know, a safe space, there was nothing quaint for them, nothing rustic, nothing in the distance. It was actually something very, very alive. Oh, Gordon! He's under arrest! What for? No, you can't take my son! Part of me wants to scream. And part of me wants to ask, what is my crime? This is a great story, 
isn't it? That's that's got kind of based in truth, but it, it's fictionalised, isn't it? Yes, I mean, in in a way, a lot of the records of Jimmy Grolson's life were actually strangely disappeared, and. Um, but also, you know, you hear the history, in history you get the public record, but you don't get what people did in their private life. So, so you know, you, we have to take certain liberties about and, and sort of imagine what what would have been in his real life. Um, but otherwise, it's sort of pretty much true to what happened to him. And uh, and I think he's the sort of guy who I think would have would have gone along with what we've said about him in the film. You've actually, uh, the, the hall itself was built, uh, was burnt down, wasn't it? And I believe you, you built another hall in its place. We built, well, yes, the original hall was burnt down and um, there's actually a plaque, uh, a little empty space where it stood in County Leitrim. So to make the film, we built a hall and um, we actually built it in Glasgow and then flat packed it over to Leitrim and constructed it in such wonderful weather it's very rainy there and it was just really good for us and uh, we managed to put it up in a couple of weeks it's a beautiful hall it was a beautiful place <laughs> and it, it seems as well it's got to add so much because you're shooting in the place where the, the story is, is from really yes I mean we were just a few miles north of, of, from where Jimmy actually built his hall and um, you know the hall is is just a building but when what we had to do was to build a community around it and get people to dance and sing and 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 so we sort of put together a, a community a, our own flat pack community which was just the most fun just spending you know months in in Leitrim and Sligo putting together the team it was really lovely and, and with regards to the, the casting you're you're using many emerging talent in the film what was what was the decision for that? well I think we always like to try and find people who are right for the part and and actually the main actors are all actors and they've been acting for some time uh, apart from Aileen, who plays uh, Jimmy's mum, and she hadn't she hadn't done it before, and we'd sort of let her in on the news gently that she was going to be in the film, but she just sort of shone out for us. And but then there's a lot of young uh, people in the film who haven't acted before or have had just very small roles, and they 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 f form the sort of dance core of the film. And and as they got more experience working with us on the film, they their parts you know, got a bit bigger and things, and it was an amazing group. Why is an old tin hall so dangerous? It's not just a building, it's what we are. And we have to protect it. We presented the mayor with the letters of support from around the country. We need to take control of our lives again. To live, and to celebrate, to dance, as free human beings.